What is going on, people? Welcome back. Another episode of the Inked NBA podcast. This is episode 22. We spoke with Derek Jones Jr. in this episode. But before I get to kind of a little sneak peek of the episode, uh, as a Nets fan, Kyrie Irving, you know, is finally able to play at home. Uh, the day we recorded this episode, uh, March 23rd, got the announcement that the there has been an exception made for the vaccine and Kyrie can play, which I'm fucking super hyped about. Um, excited to see Kyrie and KD kind of play every single night uh, and just see his excellence out there. Kyrie uh, has the best handles of all time, uh, period. Anyways, back to the episode. Derek Jones Jr., high flyer you guys know him for his dunks for the dunk contest uh he was a super dope dude super good conversation talked about all his tats talked about uh you know kind of being with different people different teammates uh the addiction to tattoos it was just a really good conversation uh hope you guys really enjoy this episode as much as i did if you are already following shout out to you if you're not make sure to hit that follow button and tune into our podcast weekly Love y'all, and uh, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Yo, I want to take a second to introduce the audience to Air NYC's all-natural tattoo bomb. The only way to keep your ink looking bold and vibrant. This all-natural bomb goes on easy and doesn't leave a greasy feeling like some of the other bombs out there. Just lather this onto your newest piece for a quick and easy recovery, or to help revitalize, replenish, and preserve your existing body art. Air NYC's tattoo bomb is a must-have for any tattoo enthusiast. Don't take it from me, though. Try it for yourself. Use code INCT20 today for 20% off. Visit airnyc.com. That's spelled E-I-R-N-Y-C.com to redeem the special I'm joined offer. today by the highest jumper I've ever seen in my life. Airplane mode, Derek Jones Jr. What's going on, bro? Good. How you doing, bro? I'm chilling. So I remember just like first memory I think of when, when, I, uh, when I think of you is I remember watching the game. I don't even remember who you guys reversed, and I just know I have the photo saved on my phone. Is when you were on Miami, and you you know what I'm talking about. Someone threw a lob, and you were Toronto. Yeah, yeah but you were literally like flying. Like that was one of the craziest photos I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, to this day, I tell my teammate Bam Adebayo, who is like one of my closest friends, I tell him that was the worst pass I ever had to catch in my life. But do you think that kind of helped you jump higher? Like it was that bad, you had to go get it. <laughs> Yeah, personally, because I'm not the I'm I'm the guy that I don't want my teammates to get no turnovers, and especially okay, that yeah. that that would have been a bad one. You you overthrow a leaper, so I just had to jump as high as I could to go get that one. That yeah, I mean that I watched that over like three times when I remember when that happened. They were posting that everywhere. That was insane. Um, when did you when did you start kind of realizing like like you have bounce like that? Uh, my towards the end of my freshman year in high school. I mean, I was I was always dunking, but like towards the end of my freshman year, that's when all the between the legs and all the windmills, the 360 between the legs, that's when all that really came about. And I just literally kept going with it. So you you were always dunking, you say that. When What does that mean? Were you like 10 years old throwing down? How old were you when you first No, 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 no. It was like, like eighth grade. Like the summer okay. of my seventh grade year going into eighth, I started dunking. And how tall do you think you were? Like five nine, five ten, maybe. Shit. I'm five nine. I'm barely touching rim, and I think I have hops. So that's wild. Uh, just different breeds. Yeah. So I wanna, I wanna get into uh, kind of early on. What was, what was your first uh, tattoo? When did you kind of go get it? How old were you? And tell me the story. Uh, my first tattoo was actually my mother's name, and it was when I was in college. Literally my first week of college, me and my teammates, we were just talking and they were like, yo, you trying to go get tatted? I'm like, man, forget it. Why not? I'm 18. I, I always wanted yeah. a tattoo. And I, I was going to get one when I was back home in high school, but like the school I went to, I went to a Catholic school, so you couldn't have tattoos showing and everything. But yeah, I got my mom name right here. It was the first one I got. Mm -hmm. And were your parents like, were they, did they care at all? Like, were they kind of like upset that you got it? They kind of let you rock. Like, how was, how was their reaction? No, nah, uh, my parents was it's just like, once I turned 18, it was, I mean, you're a man now, you, whatever yeah. you, whatever you like, you do it. And at this age, you just know you have to, like, you just, all those repercussions that come with all your actions, you got to take those now. I can't sit up there and try to wait for mommy and daddy to help me out, but. They really didn't care. I mean, my dad got tattoos. My mom got tattoos. So 
they'd be more of a hypocrite if they tried to tell me that I couldn't get none. All right, so it like runs in the family a little bit, the tattoo, uh, tattoo yeah, gene. A little bit. Did you, were your parents like at all like an inspiration to you uh, in wanting tattoos when you were growing up? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, every time my dad, I mean, when I seen my dad tattoos, I was always younger. I was like, bro, I want some tattoos. I want to get a tattoo. And once I got to high school, my dad said he'll take me to get a tattoo. But my school, like I said, it was, I couldn't have tattoos showing in school, especially when I was playing. So they, I just waited until I got out of high school and, and just did it when I was 18. And how was that uh, first session like, like when you went with the teammates? Because I know when we talk to guys, a lot of people say the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, you get to college, start hanging out with your teammates. And it's like one day you're just like, all right, yo, let's go. And you guys all end up going to like some random shop or something. How was kind of your, ex your experience with like finding a shop, finding an artist and, and the, uh, the whole process? Uh, I actually went. So I went with one of my uh, teammates. His name was Dwayne Morgan. He's from Baltimore. He, uh, he was actually in school a year before me. So he met the tattoo artist and he was getting tattoos the season before I got there. So literally me and him became close. And one day we just went to go to his tattoo artist's house and he just did a tattoo for me. But and, honestly, and so was, then, go ahead. No, nah, I would say that was that was just the moment when I realized tattoos don't hurt that much. So I'm just gonna blast my whole body. Well, that was I was just gonna ask. So after that first one, did you? It was kind of like you felt like, oh shit, like okay, they're not bad. I want more. You like had that feeling straight away. Yeah, it was. I say it was, it was addicting. It was, it was addicting. Damn. I ain't gonna lie, because like once I like once he started the tattoo, it wasn't hurting and. Like towards the end, it barely was hurting. So I was like, "If this the mo the most pain I'm finna go through, why would I not?" Yeah. And so then, how long was it, or or if you don't remember exactly, how long do you think it was between you know your first tat and then the next session? Two and a half weeks, less than that. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I went right back. Okay. And you know, while you're getting tattooed, you know, throughout the years, then you get to the league. Um, and you know, you obviously move spots. Uh, did you end up going and finding a new artist in uh, Phoenix when you first got there? Yeah. So <clears throat> my artist that I, I went to in school, he only did two pieces on me, which was this one right here, my mother's name. And then there's one on my forearm and it's, it's a truly blessed, like me and my, me and my best friend back home got the same tattoo. And he was on, he only did those two. And then my artist, I met him in Phoenix. He was Eric Bledsoe's artist. He did a few pieces okay. for, uh, he did a few pieces for Marquise Chris. But I literally, ever since me and him uh, intertwined, it was, I still go to him to this day. He he really the only artist I, I trust with my body. Okay, that's fire. I like that. I feel like a lot of people uh, like kind of don't realize how important the relationship between like a, a person and their artist is when it comes to, you know, trusting someone that getting art on you that's going to be there like for the rest of your life yeah um so you said you you name dropped eric bledsoe was he ever like kind of like a uh uh let's say influence or, or kind of like peer pressure when you came to the team with with like tattoos or were there any guys on the team that kind of were like yo like let's go get tatted something like that no nah, it wasn't it wasn't like peer pressure or anything i so i i always I like blood tattoos before I even came in the league. And, you know, me coming, once I got to Phoenix, I had two, three tattoos. And I'm looking at him like, like, all right, I got to get more. So I really, I just went up mm -hmm. to him, asked him who his tattoo artist was. And he put me on with his tattoo artist. And literally, i just been going to him ever since. Were the, were the Morris brothers on that team when you got there? Nah, they was, they were gone before me. Okay. I was going to say, those are two guys that, again, have, like, talk about blood, so having tats. Those two guys have crazy, crazy amount of tattoos. I know. They, they from my city. We from the same place. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, how your relationship with them, um, you know, those two guys, do you know, like, knowing them, do you know that they have the same tattoos? Yeah. Same exact one. And is, yeah, same exactly. Same okay. So, yeah. Which is, I mean, what do you think about that? Uh... I mean, I don't have no problem with it. It's just, that's brothers. That's what twins do. And you really don't, yeah. you're not going to be able to tell the difference between twins. I know a lot of twins that, that have the same tattoos and it's just, I feel like it's just a twin thing. You know, you, you wouldn't do that with a sibling that you were 
like two years apart, like that's something you wouldn't do with them. You just do it with a, like a twin because y'all have that type of connection. Uh, that's I just, uh, that's just what I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's different. I, like you said, I think it's dope. It's like that twin connection kind of thing. But I mean, it's nuts. And I, I mean, shout out to their artist. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head who it is, but the fact that you could get you know every single piece kind of doubled, like you do it yeah. once, and then it's like all right, like let's go do it again. I think that is that is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. So you have one of your pieces. I remember I posted uh, the real piece you have on your on your leg went yeah. viral when I posted that. A lot of people were loving that and like reposting on the story and whatnot. So let's talk about that for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, you know, say what it is, what it kind of says, and then just explain to me when you got the idea, why you went and got it tatted. Uh, the tattoo it says "real" and on the inside of it, for the R, it says "realize the E, everybody, A ain't the L loyal." So it's just. I mean, it's just something that I, I've realized throughout life. And I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. Everybody ain't loyal. Everybody ain't going to be loyal to you. So, I mean, you just got to make sure you, you surround yourself with those, you know, who have your best interests at heart. And I mean, you just, at the end of the day, sometimes you can really realize real from fake. So, I mean, that's, that's just what I do. I like that. And then you also have like staying on the kind of like sayings, tattoos you, on your back. You have the only the strong survive um and i think that tattoo is is super like just dope and, and kind of different the way you went about it getting it in like the different fonts yeah. on each of the the words so like why kind of did you do that because i mean i i've seen you know a lot of guys have back tats have like words in the back and whatever but i've never seen someone go about it the way you did with you know the different fonts on each one of the words uh i guess a shout out to my tattoo artist he He's been doing this for a long time. So, you know, I literally, me and him was at my house. This was this was when I was in Phoenix still. We was at my house mm -hmm. and literally just just talking about it. Cause that's I, I told him the saying that I wanted, but he just he didn't want to just put a like a regular just basic font to it. He wanted to actually just put a little bit of flair to it. So I he drew it up and, and showed me and I'm like, Yeah, we're going with that. There's no yeah. hands or butts about it. Like that was the like that was the tattoo I was getting right then and there. And so, so talk to me about uh, kind of how the communication works and, and what it's like sitting down and kind of brainstorming for a tattoo with your artist. Uh, I mean, with me, mostly, like I, like, I already, before I even have my tattoo artist come out most of the time, like, if, like now, when I fly him out to come see me, I have everything that I want in mind. I send it to him, he stencil it up, and we get going. But, like, before it was literally, I'll go to his house and since he's been like he's been doing tattoos for 20 30 years so mm -hmm. i mean he he has so many like pieces either drawn up or like already printed out that i could just look at stuff that he didn't do stuff that he already did do so mm -hmm. it's just like whenever he came to my house it was i literally just get to look at a bunch of pictures and a bunch of just it's just a bunch of art that i get to look at and see what i actually like and and if it's meaningful to me and just what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you talk about the addiction kind of of tattoos, uh, and you recently did just get a tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what you just got and and uh, kind of the pain level, because that spot, I you uh, know, it was a one was a big tattoo, and two, I feel like that spot's a little rough. Uh, so the tattoo is actually uh, three pieces, I believe, four four pieces. So it's the first one was it's an angel and a demon and over top the angel it like it spells hope like it just resembles hope and under the demon it resembles fear and i mean i got that because and it really is that's all you got in life is either you hoping or you fearing and me personally i got a lot of hope in god and you know i put my faith in god so that's what i'm gonna stick with and then i got a a, a skeleton which was like looking inside the mirror and the reason I got that, because, I mean, we all got to look our skeletons in the mirror one day. And me personally, I feel like I had looked mine in the mirror earlier than everybody else. So, And another one I got, like, right over top of my knee was my Joker. And I just love the Joker. It's, it's, a, it's a great, a great super villain. Me personally, I just, that's just, I'm not a villain type of guy, but mm -hmm. I, I love the Joker. And the other one was like a, it was like an eyeball with a, like a, like a clock on it. And I mean, I just, it's kind of cheesy, but I feel like, like right now is my time. So I just got my eye on my time. So 
that's why I got there. Absolutely. I like that. So talking about that, I mean, you're on a, you're on a Bulls team right now that, you know, has eyes on the championship is, you know, one of those teams when you talk about who's going to contend this year, who people think are going to contend this year, you know, the Bulls are, are one of those teams. Um, for you, how sick is that kind of being on, on a team that's like going for it and that had this whole big, you know, kind of like revamp in the last few years? Uh, how, how is it just playing with all those new guys, new faces? And, and I mean, it seems like you're having a lot of fun out there. Uh, for me personally, it's, it's great. You know, I, winning is fun. I mean, everybody knows yeah. that. And, you know, it's just as a competitor, we hate losing. So we just try to go out there and do everything we can possibly to win and or just give ourselves the best chance to win. And that's that's just what we do. But, I mean, I love this team. You know, the guys on this team are great. Vets on this team is great. I mean, I'm I'm one of those young vets, but you know, I'm speaking on like Demar, Vooch, Zach, and like those guys are just Christian. They they're all great people, and just I I I enjoy every moment I am with them, and it's just a it's a great time, honestly. Oh yeah, I'm happy for you. This is I mean I think you're you're starring in your kind of role there, and and you know it's been a great like little success story from going undrafted to now like you know playing part in a team like this. Who do you think on the team has the best tattoos? Me. Okay. I like that. I like the confidence right there. If you could, another question I got, if you could give me a name, uh, who has been the teammate that you've had in the NBA that's had the best ink? That had the best what? Best tattoos, the best ink. Besides me? Yeah, besides yourself. Uh, I had a few, I ain't gonna lie. Probably. Probably Zo, Lonzo. He, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he different. I ain't gonna lie. If it's like, I can't see it. Yeah, now nah, I can't even say I'm I'm like, it's me now. It's like, if I'm 1A, he's 1B. And if he's 1A, mm -hmm. I'm 1B. Like, we, like, it's like neck and neck. Cause his tattoos is different. And plus, those he just got yeah. on his hand. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. I ain't gonna lie. I was just gonna say, when he, when he came into practice uh, or like shoot around, whatever, the day after he got those, what was everyone kind of saying? Uh, I mean, nothing really. I mean, it's when you get new ink. I mean, everybody notice it, but mm -hmm. literally he got, so he got his tattoo and they posted his the same day I finished mine. So it was like, we, me and him, I was like, bro, this is crazy. Like we literally thinking the same. He went, he in LA right now getting tatted. I'm in Chicago getting tatted. But yeah, it's just, it's just two people that, that really love the ink. And, and it's, it's just like you telling your own story. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. That's just, that's just what we all do. And for you, are you a guy that uh, you know, you prefer to get tattooed kind of in the off season when you have some downtime from like an injury? Uh like how do you go about kind of figuring out when you're gonna get your next tattoo? Uh me personally, it's just whenever I get free time. Like say I get say we have a home stretch to where we at home for two weeks. That mm -hmm. pro that whole first week or that like let that like the, let the first week go by and that whole second week I, 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 I mess around and get at it yeah and it doesn't so so the only reason why that surprised me a little bit is I know guys talk about kind of if you get it in certain spots where it's like annoying to you know be practicing or just moving around yeah. a lot does that like kind of affect you at all or, or for you it, it hasn't ever been a problem uh me personally I don't get tattoos on my arms during the season but like my legs and everything it ain't really gonna bother me uh, yeah but I, if I'm wearing shorts I just roll them up get them over the top of my tattoo I ain't tripping and then so i have a question for you is there ever a time uh where you kind of based what you were wearing on the court uh like off of kind of wanted to show off a new tattoo so when you first got that that real tattoo you know were you making sure you had on good sneakers that game so everyone was getting pictures of like you know the leg the shoe no it's crazy because all right so me when i i wear so I play and I have like the, the long compression tights on. So like yeah. only only part of my leg on that leg where that tattoo you see is the bottom of my L. So that's all you mm -hmm. see on that leg. But when I work out before the games, I don't wear those on. So you see my tattoo then. But literally that day when I came in for that game, I did. I, that was the first day I stopped wearing <laughs> my long tight before the workout. In. I just started wearing yeah. the short ones to work out in. So my tattoo show. So then you get to get some shots of the end because that the picture yeah. we have, I think you're in, I think you're in Kobe's uh, mm -hmm. and the and the whole tat show and it's a great shot. So 
I mean, shout out to you for doing that because there's guys in the league, you know, a guy that I always talk about is KD. KD is super, super talented guy, but you would never know it because always in the leg sleeves, always in the, you know, everything's under the jersey and you just never see him. You see him maybe Mm -hmm. in the summer, he'll be wearing shorts or something. But I mean, I think more guys should be doing what you're doing and kind of going out there and, and, you know, showing everything. And then when the game comes, do whatever you want kind of thing. Yeah. I don't me personally, that's just what I like to do. Me personally, I, mm. if I get something new, I'm gonna show it off. Why would I not? It's- Hell yeah. When you, I got, I got a, a, a question for you. When you got the first tat over here, you said, right? Did you have, cause I know, I mean, I, I did it. I'm guilty of it. I know a lot of people that are guilty of it. Did you have that first Instagram post kind of, you know, somehow having, having your arm in the photo? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't. I ain't gonna lie. I really didn't. I wish I did. Cause I know, I mean, uh, Ant Simons, former teammate, he, uh, when he first got his, I remember he posted yeah. a picture, he was sitting there like lounged out like this, but it was like, yo, like, all right, we, we know what you're doing. Yeah. That's little bro. I, he, he, another one, he literally one tattoo. Now you got to sleep. Yep. So it's yep. like, it's addicting. Once you, once you start with that one, it's like, you can't stop because you want to fill that whole, that whole area. Yeah. So do you see yourself filling up like Everything? Like, are you a guy that you think you're just going to keep on getting tatted? Uh, I don't know. I personally, personally, I told my grandmother that I won't get my hands done on my neck. But the only thing I got on my hand is this. I don't know if you can. It's like a L-O. And my mm-hmm. shorty, me and my girl, she got the V-E. So whenever we hold hands, it's just spelled L-O-V-E. But, oh, that's dope. I like that. Yeah, that's literally the only one I got on my hand. That's the only one I plan on getting on my hand. Okay. And then you talked about, uh, you know, finishing up here. This is a question I kind of ask everybody. You talked about, you know, how you fly your artist out now, like after you met him in Phoenix and now being in Chicago. Mm-hmm. How much have you spent on your tattoos total? And you could, so inc- I want you to include like the cost of, of flying them out. Okay. Uh, it, that's a lot. I ain't going to lie. I mean, it's probably like, yeah, it's it's probably like 25, 30 maybe. Almost. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's early on, early on in my in my relationship with my tattoo artist, it wasn't like like he wasn't he wasn't beating me over my head for a price, but he was actually like charging for what he like what he's worth. But now it's like me and him built that relationship to where it's I I didn't get a family discount. So Yeah, yeah. I ain't lit. Really that's lit though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So last question I have for you is, is if you could pick on your, on yourself, you know, your favorite tattoo, uh, and then the tattoo that hurt the most. Uh, my favorite tattoo, I, I have three of them right now. It's, well, I have three cause I have three kids and I, I got all my kids, something that resembles them got it tatted on me, but those are my favorite. The one that hurt the most was either my back or my stomach, where I got my son feet at. Okay. I got one last question before before I let you go here, and that's it, not really tattoo related, but so after, after this just popped into my head, after watching the dunk contest this year, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have, have, you know, shot you DMs, commented, whatever, on your, on your post. Uh, one, will you be in the dunk contest ever again? <laughs> and two, uh, watching it, what were your kind of thoughts from a, from a previous, you know, champ and just a high flyer? Uh, will I be in it again? That's, that's, that's to be determined. I have no clue, okay. honestly, but, okay. uh, this year was, it was, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to, to like, kind of, you know, great dumb contests now, especially after Zach and Aaron did what they did and yeah. me and Aaron did what we did. It's like, it's not much you really can do. Like either you going to go out there and, and go double between the legs, which nobody yeah. has done in the dunk contest yet. Like it's, it's certain things that nobody has done, which is those things are like virtually impossible. Like, so yeah. like it's either you're just doing something that somebody already did either two, three years prior, or, I mean, it's, it's really tough. I mean, OP Toplin did some, he did some creative this year. He jumped over somebody, put it behind his back. I believe that was the first time that was done, but it's tough. It's really tough to, to really figure out something to do and 
And just being out there and knowing that the lights is on and after you get that first dunk, I mean, like for me, after I got my first dunk, the nerves just just went down. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's it's just different for everybody else. And what's your, I, I got one more. I keep on thinking of, of new things I want to ask you while we talk about dunking. For you, who would be your, your dream dunk contest if you could pick four guys? Uh, shit, four. It could be all time. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be in the league right now. All right. I, I can't, I can't do all time because like, me personally, all time, like back then, they wasn't really doing no, like no insane things. But, I mean, like, I would, I would say Vince, obviously, because I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's like the goat of Duncan. Like, he's, ain't nobody up there with him. Uh, I, I say Zach for sure. Aaron for sure. I ain't got a lot of yeah. Even though he hasn't, even though he hasn't gotten one. I mean, I like like him and Zach that year. Zach got the Zach took the mic and said he he believes that they should share it this year. And like I got like I said after I won, if they had gave him the same score as me, I would have been happy to keep going because yeah, I mean, that was it was a fun time. And I, mean, I we just we just love putting on a show for the crowd. And I mean, like I said, he don't have any right, but I see that he he is a contest champion. And it's, I agree. That's just how it is. I agree. And, I think that that um that under the leg over the mascot mm-hmm. thing. I think that was one of the nastiest dunks, if not the nastiest ever done in, in the only, dunk contest. Like I said, the only reason I believe Zach beat him is because Zach jumped from the free throw line. And put him yeah, the yeah. That is the only reason. Cause that is like, that's, that's some James flight white stuff. He's yeah. Right there. yeah. Like, I mean, granted I was doing it in high school, you know, I saw <laughs> Zach that before, <laughs> yeah. but it's, uh, that was a crazy, I ain't gonna lie, that's crazy. Yeah. All right. So you got you got three. Give me the last one. Would you want to jump into it? You put yourself in there, or you're just trying yeah. to watch and, and enjoy what's going on? Of course, I want to put myself in there. But it's like if I put myself in there, I gotta throw two more people in because I can't just do four. Mm-hmm. It gotta be six. Cause if you want to be a like a like a, a dunk contest for the ages, I feel like like the three that I named plus me, and you throw John Zion a healthy Zion in there. I don't, yeah, I, I believe that's gonna be better than All Star Game. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Way more bigger than All Star Game. Just that that lineup of a dunk, like that's yeah, that's 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 crazy. Yeah. All right. I appreciate you coming on, uh, having the conversation, just chatting it up, telling me about your tattoos and whatnot. I hope I am able to watch you in another dunk contest coming up. You know, to be determined. So hopefully, we see you in the next few years. You know, ramp it back up, get everyone excited for it again. But again, I appreciate you coming on. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day, rest of the season, uh, and peace. All right, thanks.